Kevin Henry of Dillon Cystic Digest. I'm here today in Chicago at the Chicago Midwinter Meeting. I talked to him, talking with Dr. William Simon. Dr. Simon had a great story he told last year at the American Association of Dental Office Managers Meeting in Las Vegas. And it's taken me a while to track it down, but I'd like to see, would you mind sharing that story that you have about your office manager with our dealers? Not at all. Uh, when I was at the meeting, I made a presentation uh, on my office manager and what she meant to me uh, over the course of, of my career and as long as she's been with me in the office. And I just brought to light a number of different points about the, the different things she's done to help my practice grow and also to uh, uh, help my practice in times of emergencies. We had a, a fire in our office in 2002, at which point she was pressed into uh, uh, basically a triage mode of, of practice management. And, uh, took us from, from the fire into a new office and uh, helped us to design the office and, and get our new office up and running. Uh, I also made mention of the fact that as time has gone by in the field of dentistry compared to when I got out of dental school back in the mid-80s, the, I, I really feel that the, the need for an office manager has expanded tremendously. And I, I read a list of different things that we deal with now on a daily basis. Uh, in today's dental office that did not even exist back in the year that I graduated dental school. And some of those things are rather staggering or surprising actually. And that something as simple as email, which now is just a, a given, is something we didn't have back in, in the, uh, the mid 80s. We didn't have computers, we didn't have faxes, we didn't have uh, so many of the different practice management tools that are available to us now. And of course along with that comes a lot of administrative load that then has to be absorbed by somebody. Back in the mid-80s when I was uh, running my office before my office manager came on board, I was able to handle most of those, those administrative tasks. But as things have expanded and we've had to deal with more and more to run a dental office, I think the role of the office manager has, has got to a very critical a very critical level, and I think it's imperative now that offices have a, a good office manager in place to, to manage uh, not only the daily operation of the office, but a lot of the administrative tools and the things that come along with running a dental, a private dental practice now. Uh, registration, insurance, human resource issues, technology, uh, social media interaction, uh, website development, just so many different things now that I, I really lean on my office manager to take care of for me. Okay. What was the one thing that whenever you decided to take on an office manager, what was the one thing that kind of pushed you over the hump that all my practice needs this? I think the biggest thing was getting to a point where I realized I just couldn't provide my patients with the level of dentistry that I really wanted to uh, because my focus wasn't, wasn't clear to do that when I had to be involved with so many other different aspects and having somebody who can, can uh, take that load off your shoulders, so to speak, is just so critical in giving me the opportunity to focus in on what I need to be doing to, to give the best uh, quality care to my patients. I think a lot of times we hear of office managers what they do in their practice, but when you were telling about how she helped her practice with the fire or after the fire, find new places, that, I mean, that was amazing, it really was. Is that just the kind of person she is? We want to make sure we mention her name as well. Give right, her some props. Sure. Tell me about her as a person, what she means to her practice. Sure. Well, Adriana Manning is her name, and she has been with me now for a little over 15 years. And when she first came to me, she came out of the banking industry, so she was well versed in, in the financial aspect of running a business and the things that come along with mostly the finance end, but over time uh, she took on different took different classes to get trained in, in the different aspects of managing a dental office and uh, as she grew and, and uh, she helped me then to expand my practice. Initially when she came to my office we had uh, two dental chairs and no dental hygienist and she then developed my practice to a point where we were able to add a hygienist into the office. She helped me to expand my first office to four chairs uh, before the fire hit and then after the fire she then helped me to uh, to do the things we needed to move into a temporary location after the fire and also then to do all of the things needed to find a new location uh, working with uh, uh, space acquisition, working with space design, we brought a, a dental des uh, office designer on board who she helped me to uh, work closely with and uh, basically uh, 
took my office to levels that I certainly couldn't have achieved without her. So she's been a tremendous asset to, to my practice and, and really my career. Uh, she's gotten us to a point now where we have a seven operatory office with 18 computer workstations, three hygienists, four doctors, uh, including myself, and a staff of uh, all told 21 people. So it's quite an attestment to the things that she has done for me as a dentist. Love Simon, I appreciate sharing your story. Thanks a lot.